Hey guys, welcome back to Matt's Movie Podcast. My name is Matt, and this is the podcast. Today we are going to talk about George Romero's Martin. I'm here with my buddy, and we're going to be talking about some Martin. So, let's kick things off. What did you think about Martin? Oh, well, I, I always liked it. I think it's one of George Romero's best movies. Um, I Outside of like the, the big ones, you know, Night of the Living Dawn Dead, of the Dawn Dead. Of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. All, all that stuff, Creepshow. Uh, it's. I think it's easily his best movie outside of those, and I'd rank it probably a, a pretty close to those. Now, I did see Martin in the past, but yeah. I don't. I didn't really remember it too vividly. Yeah, it's been a while since I seen it too. So it's you know it's nice to go back to it and yeah. watch it. Um, I remember quite a bit of it, but um, yeah, I forgot pretty much everything about it. I remember yeah. that it's very. You don't really know if he's a vampire or just crazy. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't realize that a lot of the people, like his uncle, is also could well, be... His, his cousin, yeah. Or his cousin. Yeah. Who, yeah. So his family well, member maybe. could be well, the, the whole possibly crazy, too. Yeah, because the whole thing's vague because, you know, the the that character says that Martin is old. He says that Martin's, uh, you know, older than he is. And he's like an old man. And Martin says he's 82. So, that you know, they refer to him as... as uh, a cousin, but you know, is he even really a cousin? Yeah, and he and he looks like he's, he's like in his tw- early twenties. so yeah, he doesn't look yeah. like he's eighty years old. Yeah, and I think that's that's um, the whole is he or isn't he a vampire thing is really interesting because there's there's so many vampire movies uh, and just vampire fiction in general. It's really hard to find something kind of new to do with it, and I I can't I have to say I've never seen that is he or isn't he a, a vampire thing done in any other. Uh, Horror it's more of like a psychological thriller than a horror movie. I mean, it is a horror movie because yeah. it does have a lot of blood and guts and yeah, a lot attacking, of yeah, but attacking, yeah. it's more psychological. Yeah, um, because it is. I it's mean, more dramatic and, and it's, it's not supernatural or yeah. it could be. Who knows? Well, yeah, yeah. He could actually be a vampire, but he doesn't have the fangs. He doesn't have all the traditional vampire tropes yeah. until he dresses up like in a costume to be a vampire. Yeah. But. It's 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 an interesting way to take a concept that's been around for centuries and completely change it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is something Romero does. I mean, that's the same thing with the zombies. Yeah, it's... it was big in Haitian folklore like for generations. Yeah, and he took that idea and changed it into the Living Dead. Yeah, I mean, it's well, it's very different from how it's how those older movies are. You know, White Zombie, Plague of the Zombies, uh, King of the Zombies, all that stuff. Like they, they're not the zombies in those are not eating people. They're mostly like you know strangling people or something. Right. Uh, so yeah, so he completely revolutionized zombies, and it's interesting to see him take on vampires. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, and, he didn't and, do and the didn't... same thing for vampires here because no. vampires are pretty much the yeah. same as they've always been. But I, I think it's interesting that he was able to do something interesting with them because yeah. I mean, there's so much stuff out there, vampire fiction. So it's 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 a, it's a neat twist. Oh, yeah. It is, it's really, really cool. It's really fun. Um, I think John Amplis does a fantastic job in yeah, this movie. Yeah, he's really good. And... Um, this is definitely his best role. I've also seen yeah. him in Day of the Dead. He was yeah. really good in Day of the Dead, too. Yeah. But I, I like him better in here, because he's like yeah, the well, main he, star. He's, yeah. It's, he's the main star of this movie. He gets a lot movie. more screen time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he's really good because he's got that sort of, um, like, kind of, like, quiet, sort of shy aspect to him. And he right. Seems, he seems very innocent and a little um, tortured, you know? And, then, mean, it's, the, and then it's like kind of like opposite of who he is, because he's like also like a bad man who goes around killing people yeah, and drinking well, their blood. Yeah, but I mean, he... But he's also innocent. He yeah. also seems innocent, at least. Well, he seems a little messed up, you know? I mean, that's part of why it's it's that, that is, is he or isn't he a vampire thing. He, he seems like he might just have some sort of uh, mental issue. You right, know? he's he like has, tortured, he's damaged. And is he's coming from a, a very strict family re- religiously, and they think he's a vampire, you know? They think he's... Uh, a Nosferatu, they think he's uh, that this is a family curse that's been, and maybe it is. I don't know. The the whole movie's a little vague about it because you know they're mentioning a picture book, and you know they have pictures of him from way back in the past, and that seems like it wouldn't be possible if he isn't a vampire. But yeah, there, there's really no other signs. I mean, he basically just seems like like he's a crazy person, right? So. Yeah, that's true. Um, I lo- I like the way that this movie is done presented. Uh, because it opens and there's no backstory. Yeah. You're just focusing on 
Martin on a train, and he goes and attacks this one woman yeah. and drinks her blood, and then it ends in a very spontaneous way as well with um, spoilers, but um, his uncle, or not his uncle, but his cousin. I keep calling his uncle because he looks so he, much he older looks like than an him. Uncle, yeah, yeah. But him just like coming out of nowhere and standing above him with a like a freaking uh, stake oh, yeah, the, in his yeah, heart. The, the very end, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And it's like it, it starts yeah. and ends like so. Strangely, it doesn't. Yeah. It knows, there's no build up and no real conclusion. It just kind of starts and ends. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, well, that that end staking is a little shocking. I mean, it, to be fair, there is the build up because you know, right when he goes into the house and he meets uh, his his cousin, uh, let's call him uncle. Uh, he meets his you know cousin. They're talking, whatever. He says, you know, if you take anyone from the townspeople, I'll kill you. Yeah. And, I mean, to be fair, he didn't. You know, I mean, spoiler, he didn't take anyone in the city. It's, you know, someone someone committed suicide. But uh, right after that, you know, stake to the heart. Right, right. I really like his cousin in this movie, too. Yeah, um, he, he's really intense, you know. Yeah, I like how he, like, is. he's always after his cousin. Yeah, he's like, yeah. Nosferatu! Yeah. Even he eats like a vampire. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's just always, like, on him, you know. Yeah, he's always on his always case. Always on his case, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he, he, he kind of almost feels like like a, like a the old, like, Van Helsing-type characters. Yeah. And, and, like, you know, because he's, he's so... He's got so much zeal and, and, like, you know, directed towards all of that stuff. And he just focuses on him yeah. so much. And he's, he's just really obsessed with it, too. Like, yeah. There's a, there's a scene where um, George Romero's playing the, the local priest, the local Catholic priest, and uh, that character, the Kuda character, he's... he's uh, and he's asking him, you know, do you believe in demons? Do you believe in, in vampires? And George Romero's character is kind of scoffing at this. But then the, the Kuda character, he's going, well, this is not what old people want to hear. They want to hear, and, you know, to be fair, you know, he's supposed to believe in, like, exorcisms and stuff, the priest. Right. So. I really like that George Romero plays the priest here. Yeah, it yeah. It kind of reminds me of, like, Stephen King's priest in, like, a, a pet cemetery. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I always like the, um, not, the, little the little cameos. Dr- yeah, the cameos, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, he, he gets a lot of screen time. I mean, it's a bigger Yeah, he's a though. pretty big character, actually. He's a decent... Yeah, I mean, he's got more screen time than, than, like, Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead, where he's just a reporter, you know? Yeah, yeah. So... So, it, it's it's cool. I mean, the whole cast here is pretty good. Um, yeah. But definitely Martin and um, his cousin are the main stars of this yeah. movie. And it's... um Actually, it's interesting, too, because it's one of the first movies that he did with Tom Savini. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. that's... That all, I mean, and they worked together on tons of stuff, and that all started with this one. Yeah, and he actually and found then, him, like, in a high school, like, um, during, like, a play yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and he and found him, and he's like, hey, I really want you to be in my uh, movie. So, I mean, that that's kind of cool, just, like, going from, like, uh, just being, like, in a regular play, just, like, a regular, like, town yeah, play, yeah. to, like, being in, like, a freaking movie with, like, a guy who made, like, one of the biggest horror movies of all time. A Night of the Living Dead. I mean, that this has came out much later, yeah. like a couple of years later. So it's probably still well, about a decade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, a decade. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, it, it it had a lot of buzz. So you're having like a huge like horror movie director wanting you to be in his movie, and you're just some high school guy. So that's kind of kind of cool for uh, Tom Savini. And um, Christine Romero is that's the first movie time that those two worked together. Really? And that yeah, and you know they ended up getting married. Yeah, so, yeah, mean, that's I huge mean, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, yeah, a lot of, like, uh, and, and, you know, John Amplis, too, that's the first time they worked together, and he did... And he's worked of, on a bunch of stuff bunch with of them. stuff with them, yeah. Wasn't he in Creepshow, too? Yeah, yeah, he's the, the zombie in Creepshow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, like, I, it's kind of cool how all of these people are, like, connected and stay with each other throughout uh, all the movies that yeah. they work on. And it, it's got a nice, like, small cast. It's like, you, you look at some of the credits and, like, you know, they'll, they'll play a role. It's like someone will play a role and they'll also do, like, you know, production stuff. Right? Yeah. You know, and it's got, you know, it's got a very small, you know. I mean, yeah, you, the, the, you see the credits and it goes by, like, in two minutes. Yeah, like, yeah. You same. don't have a horror movie like yeah. that anymore. It's like not even, like, independent 15, movies have, people. like, 15 to 20 people yeah. on it. I mean, even more than that. Probably, yeah, like, 30 yeah, to yeah. 40, 50 people. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. It, it, it's, like, yeah. a nice, like, nice, small, independent movie. Yeah, it's very homespun, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, those, like, there's, there's no sets. They're just, like, locations, you know? It's people's houses and... Right. You know, uh, I really want to go out and see these houses too. Yeah, the, pretty the, loca- cool. the locations are great. I, I want to see the cemetery here. from Night of the Living Dead. I want to see the house from Martin. I want to see yeah. every, all this stuff. I want to, I've, I've seen the I've seen the mall from uh, Dawn of the Dead well, before, which doesn't look like it anymore. No, it looks, it looks totally yeah. different. 
Yeah. Well, that was back in the 70s. Well, and it's yeah, still well, an active mall, so they have to keep up with the times. That's, yeah, that's true. But, I mean, yeah, Martin... But some of the Martin's outside probably, shots, you can tell that it still looks like the mall. Yeah, that's true. They didn't true. change the, the outside too yeah, much. the outside, you can kind of tell. Yeah. But, I mean, the Martin uh, location. The house still looks the same, which is yeah. kind of cool. Well, really cool, actually. Yeah, the, yeah, those... Yeah, they look the same. But I, I think that they, they really add a lot of character to the movie because they have this sort of... Um, there's this undertone of... of um, you know, it being kind of a dying sort of uh, industrial city, and, and you know, yeah. Christine Romero's character, she wants to get out and you know, find a way out, and and Tom Savini's character in there, he mentions you know, looking for work and and trying to leave the city to find jobs and, and things like that, and so that's kind of a, you know a little bit. I mean, it's not like a, a relevant to the plot necessarily, but it's just this kind of uh, texture that that those uh, settings kind of add to the movie. Yeah, and I mean, being in that setting, that urban setting, it really, um, you have the scene where he goes and detects the drug dealers. Oh, yeah. Well, that seems pretty wild, because it's, well, well, one of the things I like about the, the attacks in this movie, you know, when Martin goes and does these little vampire attacks, is uh, everything goes wrong. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And, and, and with that, like, he's... It's pretty he, he, comical, actually. It is a little, like, well, the, well, the drug the drug scene is, yeah, yeah. for sure. Because, it's always the scene in the house. Well, this, the scene, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Just well, everything's going scene, wrong. For him. Yeah, well, I mean, like with the with the drug scene, like he's he's robbing a like he's getting, stealing clothes, and the police come, they're chasing him, and then they end up running into drug dealers, and then they get into like a gunfight. Yeah, and, and, and like everybody winds people up. People are like running over people, like they're yeah. flipping over cars and everything. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of action. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very fun scene. Yeah, but but going back to um, that earlier attack scene in the house. You know, I, one of the things that uh, is really common in, in this movie is that there's this portrayal. Like, they show these black and white scenes where it's yeah. a portrayal of, of like, the, the sort of romantic vampire myth, and then you get the reality of it, and it's completely different. The cinematography in this movie is absolutely yeah. gorgeous, by the yeah. way. I love it. I love the editing and the cinematography together. It just looks... Yeah. Like, nothing you've ever seen before. I've never seen a movie that looks like this. How it cuts away to different, like shots that are black and white while being in color on the other shots yeah i mean it's it 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 adds to that fantasy element um like you like you don't know if this is the guy's head or what's going on exactly yeah um they don't really fully explain it i think it's all his what he's imagining yeah but i I mean it it might be partly yeah what he's imagining or if he is a vampire it's you know part of his past probably yeah maybe. maybe something from the past too yeah it could be yeah like it doesn't fully explain it, and that's kind of yeah. cool. You know, like a lot of the, a lot of throughout this movie, you're left in the dark, so you don't yeah. really know what's going on. Yeah, although you know, it, it leads you to like put your own like plot together for you for yourself. Well, there there is something though. Um, there's this a little theme under under the surface with this about um, you know the the sort of romanticized past and and then the present being so different, right? I mean, just. With with the, the Martin attacks, but also you know that scene I mentioned where Kuda's talking to the priest, and he's you know Kuda has these very old fashioned beliefs in like uh, in demons and vampires and stuff, and the the you know the priest's a young guy, he's not really you know he's he's thinking this is a little out there, uh, so it it I mean you kind of get that theme in there too, so I mean it could. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, possible. If, it's, if it's the past, you know, it's portraying the past as as rosier and more romantic. Right. Yeah, present. that's true. That's true. Yeah, and that's another thing about the town too, because the town's really run down. Yeah, yeah, and and, and and stuff in the past was very like yeah, and it's very upscale. It was yeah. very like wealthy. There's, there's yeah, there's 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 like you know the like you went from like mansions and castles to like broken down houses like yeah. in, in the in the ghetto or like in the like yeah. in the suburbs well i mean it's not, the, not really the ghetto it's just you know it's, it's just, just kind of like urban like urban ur- suburbs. urban decay yeah. yeah yeah it's it's pretty cool though and i i love that scene where he breaks into the house and he yeah, tries that... to attack those people and then everything is going wrong like, yeah uh, everything yeah i mean i like i like the, the the whole cat and mouse of that because yeah you know I mean, part of it is, you know... Because he doesn't know that they're having... That girl or woman's having an affair. Yeah. Well, he scopes the whole thing out, plans for when the, when the husband's gone. He comes in, and then there's another guy there. And I like... Yeah. I like when uh, he busts into the room, and then he goes, who are you? And then the guy that she's with, you know... He's like, hey man, it's, it's, it's yeah, like, like she like, thinks like that he, like he's her, like her her, her, her husband, husband or, or something. something, yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, I like don't I don't know, know this guy. guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 
I mean, yeah. that's a that that's why that, that really adds to the like the hu- yeah. the humor in that scene. It's just yeah, crazy, yeah. over the top, ridiculous. It's it's fun. Yeah, I mean, but there, yeah, there's lots of little, like awkward moments. That, yeah, like that. it's like, like awkward humor. Yeah, well, like I mean, when he, the first kill in the train. Yeah, like he has that uh, black and white image before he opens the door of the, and then the woman like embraces him, you know. Right. And then when he go, when he goes in in reality, it's you know no no one's there. She's in the bathroom, and you, like the first thing you hear is the toilet <laughs> flushing. <laughs> you know? So so you get like all, all this little puncturing of that like you know typical sort of um, romanticized vampire right mythos, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like how. Um... Like how that I like how the like the knife like the um, uh, what's it called, like the blade becomes a like blade? a symbol of oh, the movie. Yeah. yeah. Like how he doesn't kill people with his fangs, but with a blade because yeah. he's just a normal guy. He's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. But he still drinks blood. He still does a few of the things that typical yeah, vampires yeah. do. So it's like a mixture between insanity and just t- traditional vampire tropes. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the scene. Where he dresses up and um, dressing uh, dresses up as a, vamp- as a vampire, mm-hmm. and you have all the fog and everything, and that's yeah, sh- and that, it's that scene shot looks in great. dark, yeah. and it's just really, really yeah. cool looking scene. And, and he's it's, just, it's just a costume, it's just a costume. Yeah. But before he does that, he's actually trying to intimidate him. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really interesting because you know Martin seems to half believe he's a vampire, half half not, because he doesn't really right. believe the. The religious aspect. He doesn't believe in the magic. He's yeah, like, there's yeah, no magic. There's no such thing as magic. Yeah, he has a lot of disdain for like the the Catholic stuff, and it's like, well, okay, if it, it, then maybe he's just you know he is crazy. But then again, if he's a vampire, he'd probably say the same thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, true. So it, I mean, maybe he's just so trying to blend in. Maybe he's just trying to blend in with society. Maybe he does yeah. believe it, and he's just trying to um, say that he doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, I think. Overall, I'd say that I think that the movie probably wants to to give you the impression that you know it's just all made up and you know he's not he's just mixed up he's you know he's not actually a vampire but there is a lot of ambiguity. Yeah. So like you don't know you don't know what to expect you yeah, don't know yeah. what what the final result is. Yeah. I mean that's what makes this movie really really special because yeah. like it's nothing like whatever it's like nothing you've ever seen before. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen. I mean, at least nothing earlier that that had that. Uh, are is he or isn't he a vampire aspect to it? Yeah, it's kind of like, you know? like Fight Club or something like that, where you don't really know what's going on. Yeah. Until the end. I mean, it, even at the end, there's you never know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you never this you never know movie. if he's a vampire or not. I mean, you yeah. never get a definitive answer. But. So that's what makes it really cool. The whole cast is great here. The yeah. crew is really good. The cinematography is fantastic. Yeah. The music is really yeah. fantastic. I mean, that really, that really. I love the score yeah. here. The score is really good too. And I really like it in that scene that you were talking about at, at night when uh, he's he's scaring uh, his cousin. You know, when it's all the fog and like the music really just adds to the atmosphere a lot in that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this this movie deserves to get more praise than it actually does. Yeah, I think people. I mean, I think people are maybe warming up to it a little bit because, um, you know, it's it's not as big as you know Dawn the the, the Living Dead stuff or Creep Show, but I think it's right. probably one of his more popular ones after that. So. Yeah, how was this movie when it first came out? Like, was it like, was it praised or was it hated? Well, I mean, I don't know. I was I wasn't around when it first came out, <laughs> but you know, uh, I. I, I I mean, it's a little, it's a, it's a little bit lesser known, I guess, of a movie. But I mean, I, as far as I know, it's held in pretty. I'm well, curious well what regard. like people's initial reaction to this yeah. movie was because now people know more about the movie, especially yeah, if you're like yeah. in a horror horror circle, yeah. and you heard about the movie, even if you haven't seen it, you know what Martin is, and you know yeah. what it's all about. But if you first seen the movie back in the nineteen late late nineteen seventies, I wonder what people's reaction was to it. Yeah. You know. Um, because it's so surprising of a movie. Like, yeah. there's so many twists and turns in this movie. Like, the whole cat and mouse thing. Like, yeah. you don't really yeah. know what's going to happen. There's so many twists and turns. Like, if it sets something up, and you expect it to go smoothly, but it never does go smoothly. And the whole lore behind the movie, mm-hmm. like, is he or isn't he a vampire? Yeah. That's really kind of... It's just interesting. Yeah. And I've never yeah. seen anything done that way where it's supernatural while not being supernatural at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it's a very grounded vampire movie. 
Um, but it doesn't necessarily dismiss the supernatural. I mean, it, it. I mean, it plants seeds of doubt, but I don't think it's ever completely dispelled. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's always very interesting about it. Yeah. Exactly. I I totally agree with that. Um, now. Let's talk about George A. Romero for a second, yeah. just um, as a director. I think this is probably one of his best movies. I agree. I, yeah. Uh-huh. Top um, five, for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, it deserves more love, for sure, yeah. than, it, yeah. than it gets. I agree. I would say it's up there. Yeah, it's up there with, like, Creep Show and the the mm-hmm. dead stuff. Yeah. Well, the thing with uh, George Romero, for me, is, you know, Night of the Living Dead is great, but I, I, I kind of think that's... A bit of a fluke because his his other movies right after that I don't think are great. Yeah, you know, he yeah. sort of starts getting better and better and better, and you know at this point. He, so you're not he, a big fan of like the crazies? No, I don't really care for the crazies, um, and I don't care for season of the witch at all. Yeah, but you know I think the you know season of the witch came first, and eh, I didn't really care for that. The crazies is a little better, and then this is is much better. And then you know you get to Dawn of the Dead right after yeah. that, and then he gets he gets this period where he's actually very you know putting out a lot of good stuff like right like, seventy seven like, to I don't know like eighty five yeah you know like you got uh, Night Riders you got uh, Day of the Dead Creep Show. you got Creep Show yeah, you got Dawn a lot of, of good stuff yeah like I think that's probably his his creative peak and, yeah and I think it starts with Martin honestly yeah I would say that I would say that that's yeah. pretty accurate um, and then you don't really hear much about him. Like towards the late '80s, and and they, I think he made a few movies in the '90s. Yeah, he made a few in the '90s. Uh, I'm not really familiar. Well, I've seen I've seen Two Evil Eyes, which is that's him and Dario Argento each doing a segment. Okay, how is and, that movie? Uh, it's okay. I mean, I like the Dario Argento segment a lot, but I don't really care for the Romero segment that much. Um, and then I've seen uh, Bruiser in the 2000s. Eh, that's that's yeah. not that great, but right. But I think, yeah, I'd say that 77, 85 period is, is his high point. Yeah, yeah. And it uh, starts with Martin. I mean, he was, there was nobody who could, like, hold a candle to him back in the 70s. Like, well, I mean, well. I mean, I mean like, it, it's, it's, it's term, in terms of American horror directors, you have a few from every yeah, era. Yeah. Like, you have James Whale and... Um, from the 1930s. Yeah, yeah. And, like, um, then you got Alfred Hitchcock from, like, the 50s and 60s. And then you go yeah. into, like, Romero. I yeah. mean, like... I mean, yeah, he's one of the... I mean, the reason he's, a, a, I think, considered a, a great horror director is, you know, Night of the Living Dead and a lot of that stuff he did in that period, that 77 to 85 period. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean... You do have a few other great directors of the time, but... Yeah. Well, a John lot of Carpenter. them get big into like the eighties, yeah, like true, um, but... early eighties, like Wes Craven, John Carpenter, uh, Tom Ho- Toby Hooper. Well, well, to be fair, Wes Craven did some stuff in the seventies. You know, you got the Hills Have Eyes, you got The Last House on the Left. You know. Oh yeah, so, true, true, true. And and Texas Chainsaw for Toby Hooper, seventies. Yeah. Halloween for John Carpenter, seventy eight. Yeah, but yeah. he's he was still one of the best. Yeah, for yeah. sure, he, hands down. Yeah. And he will be missed. I mean, he was. Yeah. I, I would love to go meet George Romero. I yeah. actually had the opportunity when I was down in Florida before, and I'm kicking myself because I should have met George Romero. Yeah, I, I wish I would have went to conventions earlier, and you know, been able to meet him and get you know, because I like get something like Night of the Living Dead signed or, or Martin signed. Oh but, yeah, I mean yeah. that, and, and hear stories from him too. Oh yeah, for sure. I, that's the that's. He's, he's, Half the fun of going to these conventions is yeah. like talking to like these people and like learning stuff about the movie like you don't know. Yeah, like because yeah. they're actually on the set, they know everything about these movies, yeah. and you only hear mm-hmm. stuff through fans and through books and whatever and behind yeah. the scenes commentary yeah. stuff like that. Um, so it's cool to like actually meet these people. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So overall, how would you rank um, or how would you rate Martin? Uh, very well. I mean, I think it's, I'd say top five for George Romero, for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, me too. You know, it's pro. it's, I mean, it's as far as, uh, like that sort of, like, gritty sort of realistic take on, on, uh, like a supernatural, uh, sort of, sort of, uh, threat or, or supernatural creatures, you know, like vampires, I would say I'd rate it pretty highly. Yeah, like everything about this movie is really well done. I like... Yeah. I like the acting. I love the cinematography. Yeah, I love yeah. the editing, how everything goes from black and white to color, back to that black and white and color during mm-hmm. these pivotal scenes. I love the story. I love 
the music, everything about this movie is so good. I really wish it had a Blu-ray release, yeah, which but, I heard that might be coming out. Yeah, Who knows? Yeah, ho- hopefully soon. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So overall, love this movie. I would give it a 10 out of 10. Definitely in my top five Romero as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's our thoughts on uh, Martin. Mm-hmm. So thank you guys once again for turning in and listening to us talk about horror movies. Love to do more of this in yeah. the future. And... Keep on listening.